Good morning. It's good to see each one here. Hope that you are as excited as I am. My heart's racing this morning for some reason. My wife said I, she gave me a little, uh, what kind of energy drink was it? Celsius. Yeah, because I got up early this morning and she thought I, I needed a little boost and it's working. Uh, I was a little excited around the house this morning, so I was like a little energy, energizer bunny. Burning some calories this morning. So I, I hope that you're as excited as I am to be here. I uh, don't have a whole lot to share. I was thinking I had the, in our Sunday school lesson this morning, taken out of Chronicles, and it was the account of, of how David had a desire to build the temple. <clears throat> and he, he, was, he had this desire, and, and he, he started doing all the planning and, and getting everything around for it. And, and I'm sure he had his engineers and architects all involved, and they, they really were, were making some progress. And God steps in and says, hey, he says, I want you to go ahead and prepare everything, get everything lined up, because what, what you're doing is good. But he says, you're not the man to do it. He says, your son is the one that's going to do this. And so we talked a little bit in our Sunday school about how does that apply to us? How are we as, as parents or as dads, what are we doing to prepare the way for the next generation? And how are we, are we giving them the tools and, and the resources that they need to be able to, to do, to fulfill God's plan for them? you know, 20 years down the road. And so the question for all of us, especially as dads, is, is what are we, are we after the same things that God is after? Or are we just so busy, you know, being consumed with, with our work and whatever it is that we forget, you know, really what's important? And are we really trying to honor God with the way that we're, with the things that we're instilling in our children. Because they can see right through, you know, we can say that, yeah, we're, we're doing this because we want to, we want to help build the kingdom of God. But our, our memory verse said that if God's not in it, you know, it's, it's going to fail. It doesn't matter. Like, it's not going to amount to anything. So what am I, what am I doing? What's important in my life? I can guarantee you, not just for me, but for all of you dads, your children can probably tell you what's important. If I would ask them, maybe I should start asking some of you kiddos what's important in your dad's life. Should I do that? No, I'm not going to do that to you dads. But I think it would be a good exercise for all of us maybe to ask our, our children, what do you think is important in my life? What do I hold as the highest priority in my life? We may not want to ask that question. We may get an answer that we don't really really want to hear, right? Um, but our goal should be is to, to push them up the ladder a little higher than maybe where we started at. We have a kind of a special service this morning. We have uh, a few families that are leaving us officially today. I guess they've, they've left before or they've been gone for a few weeks now and uh, glad to see them here this morning. Ben's and Jim and, and Daniel and the rest of the, the, the family there. Uh, good to have you here this morning. Welcome to our visitors. We have some. Shelly's got some special people there with her and there's, I'm sure there's more somewhere I'm seeing. Not, not seeing but good to have each of you here. Um, let's all stand and greet your neighbors in an orderly fashion. No, I'm, I, you just go ahead and just, just greet them. Tell them you're glad to see them. And, uh, yeah.
Okay. Order in the court. I need one of them gavels and to hit the this thing to shut it down. Let's uh we should have stayed standing. Let's should we sing a song? You wanna sing something, Mo? Sure. What do you wanna sing? I don't, I wanna hear you all sing. Okay, all right. <laughs> I thought Moses was gonna sing a solo this morning. Let's all stand and you have a song you wanna sing? Come bless the Lord. Yeah, yeah, okay, Moses wants to sing Come Bless the Lord, so. Come bless the Lord. Come bless the Lord. All you servants of the Lord. All you servants of the Lord. Who stand by now. presence of God here this morning as that verse our memory verse uh, it said that that unless God is in it we labor in vain and so you know we can we can get together and we can have a service and and if if the Holy Spirit is not present you're gonna leave here maybe motivated just a little bit to do better but it's probably not gonna probably not gonna see much change in your life and so if God is in it, and the Spirit of God is, is dwelling within all of us, and, and He is ministering to us through the Word this morning, we're going to leave here equipped, better equipped, to face what lies ahead of us for this coming week. Because some of you are going to have some trials and tribulations this week. That's just a fact. I've, I've had my fair share of them. And by God's grace, we're going to overcome. We're going to be, be equipped because of something that Brother Moe shared or something that you heard in your Sunday school lesson that, that really motivates us and just gives us a, an affirmation from God that you are my son and, and I, have, I have given you what you need to be an overcomer. And that is, that is nothing but the grace of God that, that does that in the hearts of men. It takes us that are so, you know, so prone and so inclined, it's just in our nature it seems like, just to walk away from it. And he takes us and he, he says, you know, you're, you're my son, and that's not what I have for you, and I want you to follow me. And so we have to, we have to analyze, you know, what, is, what it is that's motivating us. And we, we recognize, that, you know, God, you know, I know that thing that I was pursuing you know, hasn't been healthy for me, and it's really been a detriment. It's been, a, it's been dragging me down, and I'm going to, for, for your honor and for your glory, I'm going to surrender that part of my life to you. And this week, today, starting right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow after you. And that's, that's serious business. When you make a, a pact with God like that, it's, it's serious business. And so let's, let's be intentional about it. Let's, let's be serious about it. Because there is there's a lot at stake. And so uh, by God's grace, we will be overcomers. And we are overcomers at this point, this very moment. So let's, yeah, let's lift up our brother and uh, let's bow our heads and, and pray. Father, we're so thankful that you are here in our midst this morning, that your spirit is ministering to us already through, through the, your, your, your word and through the songs. And Father, we just pray that we would continue to walk with you each and every day. Lord, we don't know when you're returning for your bride, but Father, we do want to be ready. We want to be watching and, and prepared. God, we're thankful that the battle has been won, that we no longer have to, to walk around, Lord, as those who are defeated, but that through your, your Holy Spirit that indwells your children, that we can, we can be victorious in whatever battle that we face. So, God, I just thank you again for faithful men. Father, I pray that you would bless our brother as he stands before us again this morning, and as he shares what you've laid on his heart. Father, we pray that you would use him in a powerful way, Lord for this congregation in this moment. Just bless the rest of this service. Go with us and keep us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Bless you. Well, good morning and welcome to each one of you. I guess the Energizer Bunny finally is losing some of his battery. But uh, 
Thank you, Paul, for what you shared. We uh, are a blessed people this morning to be able to gather this way and to see the furtherance of the kingdom of God. This morning when I got here, I, I heard, or I maybe I didn't hear it right away, but I walked down toward the gym and the young people were singing as they do most Sunday mornings. And I walked in and the song they were singing was Send the Light. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine forevermore. And that so blessed me. I stood there and I sang the song with them and then when they were done I thanked them and left. But it was just exactly what I needed to hear. And I invite you all to come early and listen to the singing. If you want to be inspired, do that. As Paul alluded to it already, we're here in a little different service. It's a commissioning service. And so some of what I'm going to share is concerning that. And this, this song, Send the Light, is, is, uh, is why it touched me so much is because that's what we're doing. We're sending the light. We're equipping men and women to go forth and to minister wherever God plants them. Um, I had been preparing a message somewhat similar along these lines, and Brother Felix asked if I would preach a commissioning message, and I don't know what that is really, but uh, I felt led to sort of share what I had prepared already, and so some of this will be uh, along those lines. I hope that you will be blessed by this message, not because... I was asked to share it because it, I think we, know, we all need to be challenged sometimes and to be encouraged to, to take the gospel, send the light. Uh, we don't just stay in our houses. We, most of us rub shoulders with non-believers. And as we do that, are we faithful? in holding up that light, the light of the gospel. Jesus Christ, the one who came and made it possible for us to be his sons and daughters. One of the verses that sort of was on my mind was there in, uh, in the gospel of Matthew. I'm sorry, I can't read my writing without my glasses. Gospel of Luke, I believe. Let's go to Luke 2, first of all, and get some thoughts there. Luke 2, verse 49. I want to just give a little context here as we know this story. Joseph and Mary had gone up to pay their taxes. And as they were leaving, they didn't notice that Jesus wasn't with them. It says in verse 46, And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple. They went back and they, they searched and looked, and they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt thus with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee souring. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? And I read this in my personal devotions here early on in the week. And, and this was on my mind. What is my father's business? What is your father's business? Are you about your father's business? And as this thought was in my mind and as I was preparing for this message, I thought I would ask each one of you that question. Are you about the father's business? Some of you all are very skilled in your occupations or in the business that you're in. 
Some of you have a lot of people working for you. Some have a few. Um, some of you know how to plan and you know how to make things happen and how to get the work done that's set before you. But the question to this morning is, are you about the Father's business, your Heavenly Father? Are you about Him? What is the most demanding thing on your heart? When you wake up in the morning, are you worried about what you're going to build that day? Or do you reflect on your Father and ask yourself, what does the Father want of me today? Are you about His business? In Matthew 9, 37 and 38, two verses there, says, Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. There is a great need for men and women to send this light, to be this light, to be active for the Father. The time is drawing near, I believe, when the Lord will return. The seconds are ticking away. I see the clock is almost on 11 o'clock, and I feel that's where we are. We're, we're just minutes. I don't know when the Lord's going to return, but we're in that time. Things are changing fast in this world. Is there an urgency among the people of God to be about the Father's business? Those souls that are lost that will spend eternity in hell unless someone comes alongside of them and sees if they can help them to point them to the light. Harvest is great but the laborers are few. And this morning as we think of, of uh, the work that is in front of these couples that are, are uh, meeting up here in, in uh, is it Green County or Greenville? Green. Green County, about an hour and a half from here. Their work is important. Are they holding up the gospel and illuminating who sent them? Send the light. In, uh, in Luke 4, just one verse there quick. Luke 4, verse 11. Let's see, that's the wrong verse. Verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is Christ. Um talking about what he was sent, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. When we look at Christ, the life of Christ, and we get, try to get a picture of what the Father's business is, when Christ was here, where was he? He wasn't sitting with the Pharisees and the Sadducees making law. He wasn't sitting in the king's palace. He was out and about presenting the gospel, what he came for. He came to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. And there was people coming to Christ with all kinds of disease and all kinds of uh, things wrong with them to be healed. And you and I, as we think of our work today, that's part of it, is to reach out and heal and help and restore. I could spend my short time here talking about the ministry of restoration, of helping restore, to bring people to Christ, to point them to the only one that can heal the brokenhearted, the only one that can give them real peace, 
as in, in John 14, the only one that is able to save them from themselves. <clears throat> in Matthew 28, 19 to 20, Christ gave the Great Commission just before he was resurrected or before he was ascended. And I want to read those words because each one of us as we think of the Father's business, should be involved in some way in this commission. Verse 18, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore. Um, I want to just stop there and think of what he said. He said, All power is given unto me. The Apostle Paul said that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. Is that our prayer? Is that how we approach this father's business? That we need his power. We need to pray for power. The power to be about his business. And then he goes on and he tells them. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the father and the son and the holy ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So the commission is given to all of us. This morning we're going to commission some of our brethren in a special way. But I don't want to leave any of you out. You came here, and I want you to be commissioned to... Be the light. Take the light. Now I want to shift gears a little bit. And I want to talk about a man from the Old Testament. And I happen to share his name. His name was Moses. And he was born in a very sad time in the life of the children of Israel. But he was born to a mother that didn't want to give up her son to be killed by the king. And so she hid him in a basket and she put him in some water and the king's daughter didn't just happen there, it was divinely ordained. God ordained that to happen. And this man grew up in the king's palace and he had everything his heart could desire, I'm sure. And he wasn't whipped and mistreated like the children of Israel, but he knew where he come from. He knew where his roots were. Those were his people. And as he watched the people of Israel suffer, something rose up in his heart, and he wanted to help them. And so one day he was out, and he saw this Egyptian fighting with this Israelite or abusing him. And so Moses felt justified in killing the Egyptian. Yeah, his heart was in the right place, but his head wasn't. The Sunday school lesson today was about King David and his son Solomon building the temple. And it sort of parallels with this story of Moses. David wasn't to build the ark or the temple, but he got it ready. Moses wasn't ready to lead the children of Israel. Things needed to happen to him before this. So as Moses slayed this Egyptian, he looked around, he didn't see anybody, and he thought nobody noticed. He buried him in the sand. And then another day, he's out, and he sees the two Israelites arguing and fighting. And he says, hey, your brethren, don't do this. And one of them looks at him and says, are you going to kill me like you did that Egyptian? And oh, he knew the game was up. And so off he went into the desert because he was afraid. So while he was out there, that's when God's calling came to him. He was out there tending sheep and he saw this bush and it wasn't burning up. It was just burning. So he was like, what's this? And he goes over there and a voice comes out of the bush that says, take your shoes off. This is holy ground. 
Anyhow, we know the story. He spent a lot of time out there tending his sheep. And he, he learned humility through that. Sheep are difficult. If you ever wonder why Brother Paul is so humble, it's because he has sheep, or at least he had sheep. And they will humble you. They don't go where you chase them. I've heard him talk about chasing them. I don't know. I've not been around him over there much. But these sheep will, will teach you things. And so I'm sure God was using this time and preparing this man for this job. This job of leading a headstrong people that only wanted to turn back to the things that God was calling them out of. And I wanted to bring this in because I believe when we go out to do a work of God, we have to have a level of humility. We have to be humble enough to recognize our own weaknesses. We have to be humble enough to recognize that we only operate under our Father. If we are about the Father's business, it's not our business. Often when, when a church starts, the remark is made, made, well, that is so-and-so's church because he's the leader. They call it his church. And sometimes the leader starts to think that it is his church, and he starts to operate like that. But we dare not lose sight of our duties as shepherds, as under-shepherds of the great shepherd. <clears throat> Matthew 5, 19, there's a verse that talks about, says, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now, I think, I think sometimes we end up like James and, and his brother when they, when their mother came and pleaded for Christ to make them big in the kingdom of heaven. And as I read this verse here, Christ was trying to teach them. You know, great in the kingdom of heaven, Christ said, whosoever shall be great shall be your servant. So, as you men go forth in your new venture, Remember, to be a servant is what God calls us to be. Having to lead out, we need to. There's men called to lead out. But if you lead out in a way that is not as a servant, your leadership will fail. It's a little bit different in your businesses. It's a little bit different because you are called on to hire and to fire people. You have to lead out differently. But in the, in the kingdom of God, it's different. We don't lead from a position of lording it over someone. We have to learn humility. And we have to love people like Christ loved us. In Titus, let's turn to Titus and read there in Titus 2 a little bit. Paul's instructions to this young man. And I just love how, how Paul just, just spells it out here for Titus. Verse 1 in Titus 2 says, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. As you lead out, as you take the light... You know, at times we are called to speak truth that hurts someone or it hurts or it convicts. Here's some time ago, we sat with a couple that asked us some hard questions and one of our answers, I think, really upset them. 
But it wasn't my answer. I tried to use the word of God for the answer. And sometimes as we think of doctrine, doctrine is the teachings of Christ. Speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. That the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. That's a pretty big list. If we would stop here and just take each one of these, we could spend the rest of my time on it and not get done. But we're, we want to cover this a little bit more. Grave, temperate. What's temperate? Temperate is not being uh, extreme. Sober. Sound in faith, in love, in patience. And then he goes in verse 3 and says, The aged women, likewise that be, they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Young men, likewise, exhort to be sober-minded. I just want to uh, talk a little bit about what we talked about in our Sunday school here because it, he, he addresses the young men. Young men, the example of David and Solomon and how David prepared all these materials for the temple. Don't separate yourselves and don't think that these older men don't remember what it was like to be your age. Yeah, we've gone before you and we've tried to prepare and to help and to promote godliness and holiness and, and all this, but we, we, in our generation, we had to look to the previous generation sometimes for advice as well. So don't just dismiss the older ones. Young men exhort to be sober-minded. Sober-minded is an important aspect of this, to, to, to think soberly. And then in verse 7, in all things showing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine showing uncorruptness, gravity, and sincerity. Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient to their masters, to their own masters, and to please them well in all things. Anyhow, I could go on, but I want to stop there. Paul is just giving Timothy a lot of good advice here, and I see I'm going to run out of time, so I'm going to go to uh, Proverbs. And leave a little bit of, of Proverbs with you. Um, Proverbs 4 has some really good advice for all of us. It's not just for these men that are, that are going uh, to start uh, their own church up here, but it's for all of us. Proverbs 4, talking about getting wisdom and heeding instruction. And this is for the leadership as well as each one here. Um, I think if we all pursue this, we can all grow together and we can all be encouraged together. Starting verse one, hear ye children the instruction of a father and attend to no understanding. For I give you good, in, I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. The wisest man in the world, King Solomon, well, you know, I, we always say that. I don't know that his end was that good. But what did he ask God for? He said, God, I don't ask you for money or fame. I ask you for wisdom. And those of us, especially our, us fathers as we lead out, but 
mothers, young men, all of us, we need to ask the Lord for his wisdom. Every step of the way, even if it's a small decision, needs to be made in the wisdom of God. Young men, as you pursue finding a companion, young ladies, it's very important that you have the wisdom of the Lord. As you look into making those kinds of decisions, Let's read just a little further. It's talking about wisdom here in verse 8. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. Talking about wisdom. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Listen to this next one. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Sometimes we are tempted to not heed instruction. As we think of the wisdom of the man that wrote this. God gave him these words to write. Even though you may be asked to lead out, this, is, this needs to be a part of your prayer that you would have, in, that you would, you would be able to take fast hold of instruction. Enter not into the path of the wicked, go not into the way of evil men, avoid it, pass not, Buy it, turn away from it, pass away. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. Um, I, I wasn't going to read all that. My son, attend to my words, verse 20, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them and health to their flesh. Keep the heart with all diligence. This is the verse I was looking for. Keep the heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let's be careful that we cultivate a heart that is about the Father's business. As we, as we go forth from here, all of you are called to a different occupation, different place in life. But the question that I want to leave with you, are you about the Father's business? We have uh, we've just baptized some new young people, or so I said new, some young people the other week. Even they, they're not 12 years old. I think Christ was maybe a 12-year-old son when he, when he knew it, he was about his father's business. But even you young boys here, you may think, well, that's a long way off. No, it's not. You are, if you are Christ, he's, he's calling you to be about his business. He's, he's got a claim on your life. And if you are redeemed, he bought you with a price. Let's honor God in the decisions we make, in the things we do. And let's be diligent to be found ready. Because I think that time is close. And I, I hope and pray that someday we can all be there around that great throne, worshiping together the way we are here this morning. May the Lord bless you. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you would just take the words that were shared here and that it would bring fruit to your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for, for your word, for the blood that was shed for us, for the reason that we can be here. For the Spirit of God that dwelleth in us, thank you, Father, that you've made all these preparations and done this work for us. Help us to use our talents and what you've given us for your honor and glory. Help us to be about your business. Lord, those that are struggling with things they cannot overcome, pray that you give them the power to overcome, to walk circumspectly, not as fools, redeeming the time, for the days are evil. Give us a heart bent toward you, Lord. 
Help us to be diligent with our families and with our church and with each one that we, be, we would be ready. So just go, go with us further as we commission these brethren. I pray that you'd be with Felix as he leads out in that, that you would just give us wisdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Uh, we can have a song and then we'll turn time over to Paul or Felix. I appreciate what's been shared this morning. Thank you, Brother Mose, for what was shared. I think it was very appropriate for a, a commissioning service. And the whole service this morning has been, I believe, a, a great blessing. I think it's a, it's a very special time. As a brotherhood, we have talked for a number of years about planning a church and, you know, 
spreading out a little bit. Um, it's encouraging when, when brothers um, set out to do that and see a, have a vision, catch a vision, and desire to, to plant a church and to establish a new work. And um, it can be intimidating. There's a lot of questions. And sometimes we, we struggle moving out of our comfort zone, moving out of where we're established, where we're comfortable, and uh, making a move like this. But I believe that um, if we are humble, as Brother Mose mentioned many times, if we are seeking God's leading, if we are realizing our dependency on him, um, we, will, we will be safe. I'd like to read three verses in Isaiah, and uh, it's the passage that I actually preached on last Sunday when I was up there, and Mose, uh, Mose read in Matthew where Jesus quoted this passage. I thought that was interesting. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they, may, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. I love especially that last part of the passage there, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Um, we know that verse also, if the Lord, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. And so as we look to God, and we ask him to establish his work. We ask him to establish, first of all, his work in our lives and to just come into us by his, his Holy Spirit and guide us into all truth. Um, then it's, it's his work, and he gets the glory, and he gets the credit for what he's doing in us and through us. And so I just want to encourage you brothers and sisters as you're going and striking out in this venture um, it's his work and it's a blessing to just to do it to make ourselves available and to be used of him so I have a few questions and I'd like to ask um, the brothers and their wives to come forward and stand up front here After we're done with the questions, I'm going to ask um, the other ministry and as well as um, any in the congregation who would like to will come forward, we'll gather around them, and uh, we will pray with them. <coughs> So I have three questions for the men, and I have two for the ladies. <clears throat> Dear brethren, the Lord has brought you to a place in your lives where you are called upon to lead out in the forming of a new church fellowship. It is our desire as a brotherhood to, com to commission you and bless you as you begin this work. Are you willing to accept this charge, and by the grace of God, and the aid of his Holy Spirit to give yourself up to the work of the Lord. Do you promise to give heed to all the doctrines of the word of God, to accept them as the rule and guide of your life, and to teach them to the congregation in your care? Are you willing to hear the counsel of the ordained leadership in this congregation, and to pursue a harmonious church relationship as you seek to establish your congregation and work toward the goal of choosing out ordained men from among your group as the Lord leads. Okay, this is for the ladies, and these are not trick questions, it's just 
didn't give you a lot of advanced warning, but um, are you prepared to support and pray for your husbands and release them as a ministry in the kingdom takes them, making sacrifices of time and emotional en energy as the Lord leads them? Will you seek to follow the calling of God in Titus 2, 3 to 5 and be ready and willing to take your calling to heart? This time I'd like to ask the other ministry to come forward. I'm going to read um, the Great Commission in Matthew. I believe it's a fitting, um, fitting passage to, to read at a commissioning. And this is what he gave us as believers before he ascended into heaven. Matthew 28, verse 18. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. All right. Brother Paul, would you pray and Brother Mose, you as well? Sure. Are we invite other people up there? Yeah. Anybody else wants to come up? Well, we're, we're praying to gather around. I was thinking about, as uh, Brother Moses and Felix talked about establishing the church, and we talked about it for years, and one of the things we always got hung up on was the details, right? Like, how is this going to happen? And, and it kind of happened organically, I guess you could say, uh, kind of a grassroots effort, and, and it it's really comes down to, to faith, believing that God's going to work out the details of that's that's where we struggle sometimes, especially as Mennonites. It seems we have to have everything figured out. But yeah, I just want to bless you that that you're stepping out in faith, believing that God is going to work out the details. So yeah, let's let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we're we're thankful and rejoicing this morning, Lord, for your goodness. Lord, we're so thankful for each one of these these families, Lord, that they're looking to step out in faith, Lord. And leave the details up to you. Father, we pray that you would just sustain them, Father, that they would remain faithful. Lord, that you would give them peace, and Lord, that you would just bless them in every aspect, um, financially, as they're supporting their families, and as they're working with each other, and working towards establishing a new congregation, and furthering your kingdom, Lord. Just pray that you would just bless them abundantly. Pray that you would just pour out your anointing upon each one of their lives. Father, we pray that, that as they are there and ministering to each other and ministering to their neighbors, Lord, that you would bless that effort. Father, that, that you would multiply uh, that congregation, Lord, that they would, would be able to, to reach those who are in need of hearing the gospel. That they would encourage each other every week as they, as they gather and as they, as they worship together, Lord, that it would be a, a joyful experience. Just pray that you would just bless them abundantly, Father, and just go with us as a congregation here as well, Lord, that we would continue to be steadfast and, and have our, our eyes focused on you. Just bless the rest of this service in Christ's name, pray. Father, we just continue to pray and just thank you this morning that your spirit is here and that we can have the infilling of your spirit that can work through us and in us and do things in us, Father, that are not really explainable to the natural man. We just pray, Lord, that you would fill our brethren here with that spirit, that you would guide them, that you would direct them, that you would give them wisdom, 
try and tear them down before they even started. Father, I pray that you would help us understand the tactics of our enemy. That you would give them power to overcome. That you would give them power to be the light. Lord, as we send them out, we just pray the Spirit and your guidance on them. We just give you, uh, we just pray, Lord, that you would protect and keep their families and their, their wives. Lord, each one that is involved, that the work would not fail, that it would bring you honor and glory. So I just thank you for faith in men and women. I just pray that each one of us would remain faithful to that. Lord, that someday we can meet around that throne and be with you for all eternity. Thank you, Father, for the gift of your, your Son and the, the price that was paid for our salvation. Thank you for that. We just ask that you go with us further here in Christ's name. Amen. 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 I forgot to mention the name for the new congregation there they've chosen is Sunlight Chapel. And so we want to, we're going to be supporting them um, once a month. We're going to be preaching there. And so, and then once a month, I believe they're also going to be here with us. And so there's going to be uh, a working together and um, just keep them in your prayers and if you can go up there, the, the Sundays that we go up, um, I'm sure they would appreciate it as well. It makes it nice when we have a few more people in church. Okay, there is a, another item of, of church business we want to attend to. Um, last Sunday it was announced that we would like to lift the excommunication from John Miller. And... Um, I would just like to read some scripture on that and share some of my um, some of my thoughts on this. First of all, in Galatians six one, it says, "Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted." There's a there's a lot of sorrow and, I guess, sadness when there, when there is a, a brother who's struggling or a brother who's, who's um, yeah, not in a good place spiritually. And uh, church discipline is something that's, that's painful. Um, but it's joyful when we can... We can remove discipline when we can see growth in somebody's life. We can see God at work there, and we can restore. Um, Ephesians 5, well, I had the wrong, here we go, Ephesians 4, I say. 4, let's see here, where was my passage? 4, verse 22. 
that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Um, in, in talking with John, I believe that that is happening in his life. He's acknowledged to me things that he was in in the past in his kind of his, his lowest moments and the things that he struggled with and he is he's putting that off and God is working in him and he's, he's renewing his mind he's putting on the new man and I think sometimes in our in our view of the gospel and how our Christian life um, works and how it unfolds um, you know, a lot of times we come to Christ and, and we, we receive the new birth and we receive salvation, but we end up getting bogged down with something and we just we, we become ensnared, we become deceived, and besetting sins or whatever it is pull us down. And so, yeah, we're in, we're in a bad place, but through through the grace and mercy of God, we can put off the old. And put on the new and we're so thankful that we can see evidence of that in John's life uh, by his own admission he's not where he would like to be but he is he is growing he's making progress and we're just so happy to to see that and to acknowledge that and so we had asked last Sunday if anybody has a, a question or a concern about about this to approach us um, and so we've not heard anything to the contrary and so I would just like to take the counsel of the church at this time um, to lift the excommunication with one clarification this does not mean that he's restored to full membership and that is um, by his own um, his own desire at this point but we would like to take the step of removing excommunication so that there is um, the freedom to move forward and to to hopefully um, have him established in a fellowship before long. So if you can consent to taking this step, um, those of you who are members here, I'd like for you to stand to your feet. Thank you for that. You may be seated. Are there any further announcements before we close the service? Thank you, Joe. Fish fry Friday night. All right. Anything else? Is this the first Sunday? Wow. I didn't have anything planned. That's my bad. Yes. Okay. All right. There is a, uh, I guess tomorrow's a holiday. I don't know if there's anything planned tomorrow evening, but. There is, as I posted on the men's group, there's a group of guys um, meeting down in Nashville to go do uh, pass out tracks and do some evangelizing if you're interested in doing that. Um, and uh, guys or couples, you know, if you wanna, if you wanna do that, you're welcome to. It's uh, some brothers from down in Pulaski, Tennessee. And uh, I just met with them last Thursday and we did some of it Thursday morning it was it was a blessing so if you're interested in doing that let me know and um, I haven't committed to going but I may go so with nothing further let's stand and uh, brother Mose will dismiss us